101.5, The Eagle, Utah's Fresh Country. That's Tim McGraw, my next 30 years, 7.48 in the morning. In studio, we have comedian Ralphie May. You know Ralphie May Hi, from everybody. Last Comic Standing. You were there. You were the runner-up. Yes. How did you get beat by, uh, you got beat by Dat Fan. I don't know how it happened, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. You know, I, I don't care that I got beat. I uh, have four platinum albums. I have uh, three Comedy Central specials. I, I got two houses, a beautiful wife, two beautiful babies. Man, if this is being robbed or so, to second place, I'll take it any day. But, but you've taken, awesome. you, but that was your first big hit, don't you think? As far as yeah, TV, your yeah. exposure to the world and all without that, a, without a doubt. And, and you capitalized, man. Yeah, you know, it's just, um, you know, I I loved it. You know, I I love doing media. I like, uh, I've always been a radio geek. I um I started doing uh, radio in 1990 in Houston, Texas, uh, with the Rock Gods, uh, Stevens and Pruitt. And um, they they had a 23 share, man. I mean, they were huge, man. Oh <laughs> yeah, they were, they were beasts in Houston. And so I learned from those guys, and uh, I did radio my whole life. So I was able to take that. And then, you know, once you get in the door with radio at America Wide, you know, I was waking up at 5 a.m. and going till 11 a.m. Uh, five days a week, um, just calling radio stations around the country. Very, very cool. Now you're living in Nashville. I live in Nashville. We have we have a house there. We have a house in uh, Los Angeles. And, now, now you uh, said you raised time. some money for the flood relief. What did you do? Some kind of a concert or we did. A benefit? We we uh, well, I've been uh, all my merchandise sales. Um, uh, we've been accumulating, and um, uh, we take that and uh, my wife and I match it, and so we we did it. Um, uh, for a month, and we're gonna do it again. And we're doing uh, so far. We're at twenty-five thousand, and um, after this week, it'll probably be around you know over thirty. And so we just keep on adding to it. You know, we take all the merch sales and put it in towards um, helping people because it, it's weird because this is probably the largest non-hurricane natural disaster that America's ever experienced, and nobody knows about it. Nobody's talking about the. Well, why, this, why do you think that is? You know, it's Tennessee. It's um, people just think, oh, they're just, uh, you know, rednecks living by the water, and they got what they got. And they couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, you have to understand that um, the river was at 45 feet above flood stage, okay? I mean, there's no, that's, all of downtown was wiped out. Um, it, was, it was a level of, of destruction that I don't think America's seen unless you're in a hurricane. I mean, it was it was huge. I mean, it was all of Central Tennessee, not just Nashville. I mean, all of Central Tennessee. Do you feel like the government has not stepped in, or is, I know Without the, a I doubt. know I know the media hasn't really. Barack Obama it. hasn't even said anything about it. He hasn't come, he visited. He hasn't said anything about it. He hasn't had a speech. Uh, they declared it a a disaster area, and they brought in FEMA, but they haven't talked anything more about it. And it's it, it's a shame, you know. We have. You know, people died, people lost their homes, people lost everything. But yet you didn't hear about looting, you didn't hear about theft, you didn't hear about um, rioting. Um, now you heard, didn't ordinary. hear about it because it didn't happen? or Because it, it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. You know, there's a level of, uh, you know, Nashville, uh, white, black, or brown, uh, poor, rich, um, everybody came together. And, and you have uh, rich people... Uh, helping poor people. You have people with, you know, fallen trees and then somebody just showing up with a chainsaw and cutting up the tree. Uh, you have people helping people move everything out of their homes. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing to see, if you fly over Nashville, how much trash is out there by the streets. They've, uh, people have lost everything. Uh, total decimation. Nothing's stable in their house. I mean, they have 15 feet of water in their house. It's like there's nothing left. The house isn't left. And, and it's, it's amazing to me that no one uh, really knows about it. And, um, you know, this summer, uh, Brad Paisley has asked me to, to help out with his um, fundraising concert, as well as um, uh, Faith Hill, Tim McGraw. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to help out as much as we can. But, you know, it's a, it's a great thing that, that this town, you know, they have a lot of heart. You know, that's that's one of the reasons we moved there, is they have a lot of heart. They have a lot of, uh, they come together as a team, and they work hard. And, uh, you know, I, I like being a part of that. How much time do you spend in Nashville? Um, you know, not enough. Not enough. Because you're I, on the road all the time. I'm on the road all the time. And so, um, when I'm back in town, I, I do, I mean, man, I, I help my buddy uh, coach the uh, Nashville Predators uh 
the Junior Predators, okay? I have, <laughs> I have a hockey, okay? I don't know anything about hockey. I just figure if they can get it past me, they're pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, I just stand in the goal and be a space. Um, it's, it's fun, man. You know, I have a garden. It's crazy, you know? And it's weird because I'll throw a party and then... Like, everybody's like, oh, my God, you know who that is? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I met him at radio. And um, and it's like, you know, Brad Paisley he picks up my wife's guitar and starts playing, and then she grabs another one, and then, you know, they're all playing. And then, and then uh, you know, Trace will uh, come up from uh, the cold beer and the barbecue, and he'll start singing, too. How, how'd you become friends with Trace Atkins? You know, um, he was a fan of mine from Last Comic, and I met him in uh, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And um, we were talking... And we're cracking up, and uh, this waitress walked by. It's a funny story. And I go, oh, look at the hitch and her get along. Well, that's a nice pedonkin. <laughs> she goes, what? What did you say? Well, you see, look, as she walks away, pedonk, 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 pedonk. All right, and he starts laughing. He's like, let me think about that. All right, and about uh, two months later, he called me up and goes, man, I think we just got the biggest hit of every time. No way. Pedonk, pedonk, pedonk. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. He's, um, he's a really cool cat, man. A really cool cat. Um, and uh, these guys are so talented. I mean, as musicians, you know, I'm, I'm in awe. Every comic wants to be a musician. Mm -hmm. Every musician wants to be a comedian. And so it's something that for us is like, wow, you know, that's cool. You know, these guys are phenomenal. Love or hate the genre, you know, I, I'm more of an old uh, old country fan uh -huh. instead of more of the 70s rock country that's kind of out now. Right. Okay. But, you know, you got to admire the musicians, you know. People can actually put the, put it to it, you know. I, I, I really am impressed. Yeah, Brad Paisley is an amazing guitarist. Amazing guitarist, okay. And, uh, but these guys, they come out, and, and they're just regular people. And the great thing about Nashville is, you know, being a celebrity, uh, it's that nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like, I, don't, I get treated like everybody else. It's nice. You know, it's like I don't, like if I go some other place, you know, people will turn around, oh my God, can I get your autograph? Can I do it? In Nashville, I'm nothing. Okay? It's like, oh, really? Oh, big whoop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ralphie's at Starbucks. Yeah, Toby Keith came by here a minute ago. All right? Yeah, touche. Touche. Right on. You know, it's awesome, though. Okay, Ralphie May in town doing two shows this uh, tonight. One show tonight, one show tomorrow night. Yeah. Seven o'clock is showtime. Uh, tickets are 20 bucks at Wise Guys in West Valley City. Do you meet and greet after the show and everything, too? Every one of them. Every one of them. I, um, I, uh, I stay after, I shake every hand, I, um, I take every auto, uh, every take, take every picture, sign every autograph. Um, I do that after every one of my shows because, you know, I, I respect what people make their money, you know, and that's why I do a longer show, too. I know you, you own Wise Guys, so you didn't know that. I don't okay. know if you know that. <laughs> I'm fine. I do, I, do like, I do like about two hours. Very nice. Okay, because um, the way I look at it, my average fan, if they have a job in this economy, are making about 20 bucks an hour. After taxes and insurance and a 401k that went to, you know, just went to hell a couple a couple years ago, uh -huh. um, these guys are making maybe $15 take home. If my tickets are 20 bucks, um, you know, it took them at least two hours to make the money to, uh, uh, to come see me. Why shouldn't I give two hours of my life? Check you out know, Ralphie May. It's a fair deal. Tonight and tomorrow night, Wise Guys West Valley City. I will 7 o'clock. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure to have you, man. My All pleasure. right, Carly, how's the drive in?